What are the wrist angle faults that cause a hook and how do you go about fixing them? Well, today, using the hack motion wrist sensor, I'll identify the main wrist issues that golfers have when they're hooking the ball. And using the sensor, the app, and the biofeedback tool, I'll prescribe some drills to help you eliminate that hook for good. The root cause of a hook is a closed club face. And a closed club face is caused by an inefficient twisting of the club during the swing. Specifically, you're going to be twisting this club down towards the ground too much. And the wrist motions that influence that would be a wrist, a lead wrist that moves too much into a flexed condition. So one that moves into this bowed or flexed position, and also one that would move into a raised condition like so, where the wrist would uncock. And this is referred to as ulnar deviation. Now, those movements are happening throughout the swing, whether you like it or not. The likelihood is you have no awareness that you're twisting or moving this club around its axis like this consciously. Everything that you're doing in your swing is pretty much an un unconscious pattern that you've learned over time. But I'm gonna show you today how twisting the wrist incorrectly is forcing your club face to be too closed. And then as a result, and you swing through, you're producing these dangerous and destructive hook shots. This twisting of the shaft, which closes the club face can occur at any time during the backswing or even the downswing. Oftentimes when you look at your swing, if you're trying to fix something, you're trying to fix the path. You notice that the swing path is incorrect. You're swinging likely too much into out and you keep trying to straighten the path. The problem is your swing reacts to the club face. Until you fix the club face, you'll never be able to fix the swing path. So if you want to get to the root cause of the problem, you've got to fix the face. And to fix the face, you've got to fix the wrists. I now have the hack motion wrist sensor on my lead wrist and it's calibrated. You can see from the screen there that as I move the wrist into flexion, which would be the movement that would close the club face, you see how the number on the screen there moves from a very neutral, almost zero, into this 40 degrees of flexion. That's the rotation that you're putting about this shaft in your swing unconsciously that's closing the club face and causing you to hook the ball. Let's go ahead and hit one of those and see what that would look like. I felt really uncomfortable for me to twist my wrist that much. Turns out I managed to save that pretty well, but the app will show me that my wrist motion wasn't anywhere near within the range that it should have been. The app shows me very clearly whether or not I was able to fall within the ranges that would be considered neutral or, or functional for good wrist angles and club face control. Here, I started at setup with my grip about 20 degrees of extension. That's not uncommon. If you've got a fairly neutral grip, most of you should start with some degree of extension in this lead wrist. That would be a small amount of cupping. As I move to the top, I moved and twisted this wrist 37 degrees to really close the club face. And as I swung down and hit the ball, part of me was able to fix some of that. Being a fairly experienced golfer who's played this game for a very long time, I have developed the skill of club face control to an extent, meaning my brain knew very, very well that that club face was too close coming down and I made a last minute adjustment. I managed to hit the ball pretty straight, but that swing felt horrible. Too much twisting in the grip during the backswing, put the club into this condition where it was too closed, and then I was really having to fight to hit a good golf shot. Most of you won't have the skill or the ability to save that club face at the last minute. It's much better for you to learn correct wrist angles and the best way to do that is through the biofeedback mechanism within the hack motion sensor and the hack motion app. The biofeedback feature within the app allows me to set a range for my wrist angle in this flexion and extension movement which gives me audio feedback if I either hit the range I'm looking for or miss the range. Now in this example, in this example right here, the amount of extension that I start with in my lead wrist 
is about the same amount I want to maintain as I swing the club back in the early backswing. Now, for the purposes of the video, I'm going to invert this sound, meaning it's a function that you can have within the app. I don't want to hear any sound at setup or in my takeaway. If I was to do that, let me just take my grip. So with my grip, I have a reasonable amount of extension built into this lead wrist to start with. And as I swing back in my swing, if I keep the club face suitably open, which is the feeling that you're gonna to need to have, notice how this club face is pointing out towards the, the wall rather than the incorrect down towards the ground that you're getting. As I twist this into the incorrect position, you'll hear the noise. You hear the noise coming out of the iPad. So I need to keep this wrist extended enough so that the club face is open enough that I'm gonna to learn to train the hook out of my swing. So I can practice this at home with or without the ball at the driving range. I can make rehearsal swings where I'm training these wrist angles. And in this example, I don't want to hear that noise. When I hear that noise, I know that I've turned my club face too far down and I'm back into my old position. So the biofeedback is extremely beneficial way to help you learn the correct wrist angles and to learn them quickly. Okay, let's go ahead and hit one, see if I can do a better job of keeping that club face a bit more open. And in doing so, making sure I don't hear any of that feedback in my, in my takeaway. So learning the correct movement of that wrist. There we go, a little bit more open. Let's go ahead and hit one. That was a pretty nice one. Much better strike. Ball flight was good. Distance was back to where it should be. How did we do? Let's take a look at the app. You can see from the first tile there that my address position with the wrist was basically the same. I had a similar small amount of extension in the lead wrist when I began the swing. So I didn't make any changes to my grip at setup. Moving to the top, I managed to produce a reasonable club face position at the top. I did not close the club face. I did not flex the wrist as much as I was doing in the original hook swing. That's the problem that you're facing as a hooker of the golf ball. You're flexing the wrist too much. You're closing the club face too much. In this example, I fell just outside the recommended range for hack motion, but only by three degrees. So I'd be pretty happy with that. The outcome of the shot was also very good and that would be feedback that I'd be looking for as well. And then at impact, I was able to deliver the optimal amount of wrist bend, which enabled me to hit down on the ball, have some shaft lean, still compress this ball and make good contact, but control the direction, not start hooking this ball off the planet. And this more neutral club face will enable me to de develop a more neutral swing path. So I won't need to swing excessively into out anymore. That has massive benefits in both contact and shot direction. So if you're ready to stop hooking the ball once and for all, you need to train those wrist angles. But as I demonstrated, it must be in a very specific way. And the only way to truly know what's going on is to measure what's happening at the wrist. And the hack motion wrist sensor is the perfect training aid for that. The hack motion wrist sensor and app breaks down the very complex subject of the wrists and makes it extremely simple and user friendly. The app uses a very simple color code system and it gives you ranges of which you need to move your wrist within. It's a simple tool that I use very frequently in my coaching. And if you're serious about improving, I'd highly recommend you take a look at the hack motion wrist sensor.